Here we go. Hi, how are you, Scott? I'm good. How are you tonight, Anthony? <laughs> very, very well. I, I don't know what it is about that tune. It's, I got it off Shutterstock or something. It's got a little catchy. Slow motion, cello <laughs> smiling, and I have no idea what they're playing, but they're not playing that theme. Um, <laughs> no, I noticed that too. So, so what have you been up to? Well, today I just uh, I got out this video that I was doing on um, some Record Store Day releases that are coming out. I saw it. Very, very good. Yeah, they're very kind good. of like they're kind of like historic documents, that kind of stuff. But um, they're they're interesting from Elemental Music and uh, digging, the, digging, digging to get to yeah put anything now since FOMO's finished. I mean. You know, <laughs> It's true. One of these tapes, the the producers of Feldman found in the producer of the tapes garage. It's been there for fifty years, shelved. So, you know, the audio quality is okay, but you know, you know, it's their major artists: Yusef Latif, Chet Baker, Art Tatum, uh, Mal Waldron, Art Tatum. So, I will tell you the production value that he does, like the quality of the of the jackets and the notes. Mm. Really and how much are they? You know, I don't know. Oh, that's I, don't right. know. I know you to review, but I was wondering, you know, I don't think they're that much. No, they're probably like $30, $35 for the double record sets. Yeah. I don't know. And that's pretty amazing. Uh, but I remember, I, I didn't even know what Record Store Day was. And, uh, and then, then I started getting really back. I mean, I was never out of vinyl, but getting into vinyl seriously, like curating a collection and the, the press things for each one. Yeah. And then I realized what Record Store Day was. And then it was there was a lot of FOMO and a lot of hype about it. And uh, some of the stuff they're pressing, of course, there was no classical. Nothing. No, no, there's not. But no. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, he, he got, you know, uh, seven, you know, Yusuf Latif from Avignon from 800 years ago, you know, and a dodgy recording. But, you know. Carlos Kleiber, Beethoven 5, a reissue. No, I can't do that. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to talk a little bit about that later on today, about uh, market share. Mm, okay. Now, That'll let me, be interesting. Let me sure. just get to the comments. So I, also, got... I also going to talk, when we do the streaming segment, I'm going to show a little product that I came across this week. Wonderful. Yeah. There's Joey. Hi, Joey. How are you? Hey, Joey. Great to see you. How are you? <laughs> There's Roy Luis Herrera Lepron from Arizona. How are you doing? Good evening. There's a lot in the news these days. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that, do any of you attend Record Store Day? I don't. I never have. Um, there's only usually a couple of releases that I want each time, and I'm usually working during that time, so I, I, I can't make it over there. But I usually grab them the next day. Like last time, I, I really wanted the Chet mono reissue, and I got it the next day from from the in group. So that was fine for the same yeah, price. That was Chet Baker out. I love Chet Baker. <laughs> That's yeah. a good one, though. And I, I got I got the, the the blue blue room or something in, from Dent from Holland. Great digital, but still great. No, actually, it's not yeah. digital. Um, but the one from Paris was awful. Um, and then I got another couple. It was like, how many times are I going to have to hear him sing in his little gentle voice? <laughs> so I, I, I kept a couple and sold the rest. Yeah. Uh, so no doubt. I haven't attended Record Store Day. And uh, it's okay, Jan. We can continue because Jack is now in the building. Hi, Jack. Uh, <laughs> hey, Jack. Oh, hey, Jack says Not there's nice. Taylor Swift. <laughs> Jack, are you a Swifty? I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the Swifty is, although, you know what? I won't have anything said about that dear child. She gave $100,000 to the Nashville Symphony because Grandma used to take her to the concerts and she loved them. She loved the music. She oh, liked, Colorado. She liked uh, uh, Peter and the Wolf. And then she also gave 50000 to the Seattle Symphony. I thought that was absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Cool. Now she's... Yeah, so that's great. Um, generous, for sure. Texas, he doesn't go to Record Store Day either. Now that's an interesting, that's an interesting comment, Jack. And I, I, I think we can talk about that. 
I don't think it was, was it Taylor Swift? I don't know. But I do know that um, Jennifer Hudson was asked to sing with the New York Philharmonic. Hmm. And it was with Marin Alsop, who should have known better and should have guided Miss Hudson. Jennifer, you don't have the right voice or the technique to sing Ness and Dorma. <laughs> she went ahead and did it. And that fool Marin Alsop, please quote me, I'm pissed off with her because she made that girl look like an idiot. Oh, no. In, in, in Central Park. So if you go there and have a look, please don't, because I think she humiliated herself, because the poor lady can't sing it. Broadway shows, pop music, she's incredible. A great talent, a great artist. But it just, it was not a thing for her, for her to do that. And mm. it was a publicity stunt, and everybody looked terrible. The orchestra, the conductor, and poor. Um, uh. So yeah, um, that mm. I was not happy with. Singing classical music, you need technique. And that's the problem. Most pop singers do not have technique. They sing through their noses. They don't use their diaphragms. Or if they if they are, like maybe Taylor Swift has vocal lessons. I'm sure she does. I'm sure Jennifer Hudson has. They learn to breathe properly and produce a sound. But they still, they can't sing to Rosen Cavalier. Just like every pop, every opera singer, Kiriti Kanawa, uh, 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 not Jesse Norman, um, Renee, Fleming. Renee Fleming, I've done pop records. Mm. Yeah, right. Okay. Renee Fleming's rock one wasn't bad, but Kiriti Kanawa, I feel pretty, oh so pretty. That's <laughs> ridiculous. I mean, you know, <laughs> she has one of the most beautiful soprano voices in the history of the world, but singing Bernstein, anyway. So, anyway, sometimes money, right? So, anyway, Joey says, Hope you guys are doing well. We're doing very well. I'm just going to put our friends James up and our friend Carla. Hi, gentlemen. How are you? Hi. Hi. Hello. Oh, good. good to see you. I'm glad you're on. We've got a we've got um not, not so much a truncated show tonight, but um if you don't mind uh, to the peanut gallery, um if we could make sure um please comment lots what you're doing. We love that. And ask lots of questions. We love that. And if you could please like and subscribe, it helps the channel. Sure. Get to log on to the Pressing Matters, Scott's amazing channel. But you're there already because it's a, the fantastic channel. And there's some questions this week we need to answer. Ray's question about the Chopin project. I did read your question. I did do a listening, and we can talk about that. And then another question about Superfine and Turnabout labels, and we'll um, we'll um, we'll talk about that as well. And then guess who's in town? Oh, it's Angie. I thought it was Armin. Sorry. <laughs> hey, Angie. How are you? She's having technical difficulties. Angie, are you on mute? <laughs> I'm going to... <laughs> there she is. Are you there awake? Angie was an exponent. And so Angie said to me, oh, yeah. I said, are you going to come on to tell us how exponent was? She went, oh, yeah, but I think she was... <laughs> Hey Angie, you're on. Are you okay? We'll let it. We'll, we'll let it slowly wake up. Uh, okay. okay. Oh God, it's not going again. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's let's just remove it for a second. Okay. So Joey says, "Hope you guys are doing well. How are you? Do How's Carl and uh, and James doing?" Well, I'm doing fine. I was traveling a bit. Um, back stable here in my little office, uh, and so. Trying to get back in the swing of things. Had a nice time traveling a bit within Indonesia, quite way, way out in the boonies. Um, quite something. Did uh, you see Colonel Kurtz? What's that? Did you meet Colonel Kurtz? Bob <laughs> <No. Papa> Bacchus? <laughs> As you were on the river in the, in the, in the boat? <laughs> no, just uh, way out with, you know, coconuts and uh, papayas mangoes, mm. all sorts of things, rice patties, and uh, no wireless, uh, quite something. But it was I saw a photograph on Facebook, a film of the, of the train going by the, I mean, just the vegetation. Yeah, coming back to, coming back to civilization, right? And train about a, about a two, two hour, 40 minute train ride. Yeah, it wasn't good uh, real. I could tell, I could tell you, you were going through Buckinghamshire. It was just so unique. And James, how are you doing? Did you, you went out tonight? Did you have a, did you have a date tonight? Is that why you were? No, I went to the theater because um, uh, 
some friends who were doing a show and um, it was at the Camden People's Theatre. So I went up there to support them. Very good show. And in fact, one of the cast members, I think, is going to join us by leaving a, a message tonight. <laughs> um, it was a, quite a drunken message? Hey? A drunken message? <laughs> uh, quite possibly. <laughs> I, mean, I, le I left them. I left them going out for a meal. So um, who knows? Oh, well, thank you. Oh, you know that's the fun part after a gig, going out. You know. Although, well, yes, you know, yeah, it was, and I mean, a lot of them don't live in London, so you know, obviously, a lot of them had to go to different places. But uh, no, it was a good show, and uh, it's nice to nice to get out and see. I mean, the rain stopped today, but up until today, it's just been raining as normal. So it was nice to get out and not have to worry about getting drenched today. Yeah, going out with the uh, the gr group after a show is one of the most enjoyable things. We talked about it on videos. Unless you're in the New York Philharmonic. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, well, I mean, that... that's very naughty. It's We won't get into it too much, but if you go to the New York Times and see what's been going on, something happened 10 years ago. Two players were let go. Uh, then the uh, local union uh, renegotiated them back in. And the young lady that the problem happened with has been had an interview on, I think it was Vulture or Dakota or some of but the poop has hit the fan. And uh, it was a very compelling story. And even though you, you have to, you know, do process, uh, they've been let go from the orchestra again temp temporarily. But anyway, you should read that story because, I mean, you know, the New York Philharmonic is a, 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 one of the world's great orchestras. It's an august uh, institution. Well, of course, it sort of plays into the Mozart in the Jungle thing. You know, that the book that that girl wrote, it was also an oboist who, who was based in New York. And I mean, her... She, she just passed away, I think, didn't she? Yeah, hey? I, think she, I think she just passed away. She did, yeah. yeah she died about a year ago, I think, yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, what she had to say, well, you know. But it's just it, the most wonderful thing. To, after a gig, uh, you're kind of coming down to earth. And, you know, you've been pumped up. Like the show after the show, right? You know, you do the show, and it's so nice to kind of debrief and chill over coffee or a glass of wine. Mm. And so, what happened was they they went out to a condo, a local condo, after the Aspen Festival, and some terrible things happened, and uh, you know, it being proven uh, medically. So it's uh, it's well, it'll all come out in the wash, unfortunately. But just just tragic. That's one of the loveliest things. So for that to happen to the and then her yeah. did, not, did not get tenure with the 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 uh, so they lost their jobs. The, you know, it's just a horror show. Anyway, if you go to uh, Norman Lebrecht's site, um, uh, what's that called? Norman Lebrecht's site, um, Slipped Disc, Slipped Disc. Yeah. Uh, you can read all the you know the grotty details, unfortunately. So let's put a few more um, uh, comments from Hoes. Why don't you, Scott? Why don't you read this one? I will try. Um, doing well here. I listened to the LSO Dorati. Um, I'm sorry, it's a little hard for me to read. Mercury, Scythian Suite. Scythian Suite. Scythian Suite. I'm sorry. Scythian. Scythian. Oh, Suite. Scythian. Okay. I never heard it pronounced. I didn't know. That's okay. um, with the LSO Goosens and Corrobore. Okay. Uh, earlier and my ears are still ringing and the dogs need therapy. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, corroboree, that's, that's quite a sonic show piece, isn't it? <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. And Jack said he used to play the Broadway show Woman of the Year with Lauren Bacall. We call it Woman with No Ear. <laughs> <laughs> so, I did a show in London. I think I'm not sure if you're on it, Jim. No, 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 net. And the soprano would always come in and we go, no, no, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some of the things it's like there there is a very bad stereotype that singers can't count. Is that true, Jim? <laughs> no, <laughs> that, no, that that comes from the fact that in the 19th century, particularly in Italy most singers uh, didn't necessarily read music. They were actually taught their parts 
by a repetiteur who just banged it into their heads until they did it from memory. Um, I mean, apparently Giuseppe Di Stefano was was somebody who um, was, right, much, you know, I mean, he, he sang them, but but he learned them from a repetiteur. And so consequently, an awful lot of things, if something happened and, and the orchestra accompaniment wasn't there, you know, the, the singer may well just carry on anyway, regardless, <laughs> because they haven't got any other basis to, you know, they, they can't think, oh, yes, sorry, the, the orchestra's two bars behind me. They just think, well, I'm, I'm here, so therefore I must be right. <laughs> and um, But the worst thing is, I, I, I won't mention, but a famous English soprano was doing a, um, she was singing Trovatore in Italy, uh, one of the few English singers, and she was having a few problems vocally, and she was on stage in Act One, and she could hear backstage another soprano warming up singing the arias from Act Two. Oh no! <laughs> and um, that apparently, I mean, I heard this from her ex-husband. Um, that so spooked her that she sort of went to pieces and. And so the the general manager of the theatre said, "Oh, well, don't worry, you know, Santo, you know, Senora Santo is going to go and finish the performance." And you know, that's that's the sort of cutthroat world that opera used to be. I don't think people get get away with that today, um, because like like you know, sort of bad behaviour in in any sort of situation. Yeah. But you know, um, it just goes to show how much stress and and hassle you know sort of people can be put under when they're on stage and um i mean i i found it quite shocking she she sort of went on to have quite a good career in britain but she never again sang really on the continent because she didn't she lost her her nerve really and mm. um so yeah it's a, it's it's a complicated thing doing performing you know it's not it's not as easy as simply well, putting the neck that's what I was talking about before. Like if you like when we finished a gig and Jim and I would come either attending a gig or playing a gig, mm -hmm. you just enervated, you know, energy level. Um, Jim, could you read the next question from Joey? Can you see it? Uh, in your opinion, who do you like performing Dance Macabre Opus 40? Thank you in advance. I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. Great to see you guys on the awesome show. Well, Joe, which uh Scott, which uh, dance macabre do you like? Mm. I like the one that's on the Reader's Digest uh, box. I can't remember who who does it though. Leibovitz, maybe. I think it is Leibovitz. Yeah, yeah. Well, he does not on Bear Mountain, which I actually can't listen to because he does such. Crazy, insane things with it. it makes oh, okay. it, it's just yeah. ridiculous. I can't even. I mean, he just abominizes it. Um, uh, CD, the Montreal Symphony with Nagano is very good. Uh, but vinyl, there's some running. I think there's is there one on um, on uh, which well, is on the Witch's Brew? There's one, I think. So there's the yeah, new mm. symphony, Yellow So it's very, very yeah. good. Um, I think there's also there's another one on on. I'm not sure, but if you get the one on Living Stereo, the, the Analog Productions reissue, they're really, really good on vinyl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I got I a always, Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I, I always think it's interesting that Leibovitz box set, um, I think it's the, um, uh, that, the big box set of about 40 CDs or whatever, and it's got the great Beethoven cycle on, it's got... But he's got his performance of the right of spring. And considering he was Pierre Boulez's teacher and, and was, you know, this sort of very highly thought of um, composer conductor in the, you know, 40s and 50s and early 60s, his recording of the right of spring is, is atrocious. I mean, it, it's just, you know, I mean, it. And I was really shocked because I was looking forward to putting this on, thinking, "Oh, you know, here's a composer will have their own composer's take on it." Oh dear, you know, dollars <laughs> ditch, dollars ditch water for a start. And I, 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 I can't remember the orchestra playing it. I'm not going to embarrass anybody by even finding out, but it, it was truly terrible. 
<laughs> and I thought, well, so much for these composers conducting modern music or contemporary music at the time, really. It's like um, musicians and audiophiles. I got a, I got an, uh, a message tonight from um, Robert Wynn, the ex-principal flute of the... Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, he said, hi, mate, how you doing? Um, I got a fistful of CDs that I want to play and I want to be uh, left behind. Uh, can you tell me your name of a good CD player? <laughs> so I just mentioned Cambridge Audio, something 600 bucks. I said, what about an SACD? SACD? He goes, what the hell is an SACD? <laughs> and he said, you don't, don't, I mean, you know, one of the best musicians in England and they don't, they don't they, and he's made like a hundred recordings. And what's an SACD? I mean, it's just amazing. Anyway, so he's, he's going to, he's going to make sure he's, he's, uh, he's got a CD player to play his CDs on. The one that we're talking about, Frank Shipway and, the other stuff. Now, um, Ray, Ray says hello all. Ray from from uh, New Zealand. How you doing, Ray? Now, Ray, you had a question for me in the in the um, comments, and the Ray's question was about the Chopin project. Correct, Ray? So I did have a listen. It's okay. It's it kind of opens up a whole can of worms about what constitutes classical music these days, and and. And I understand you, sometimes you need a, a bit of an angle. You need a bit of a, a theme, you know? Uh, so, Carl, who was the, 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 the pianist that you enjoyed do, doing the Goldberg? What was his name? Viking Kerr Olofsson. Yeah, you're on, you're on mute, mate. You're on mute. Yeah, Olofsson, that's correct. Yeah, yeah Olofsson. <clears throat> and... He does, he does, you know, Debussy Rameau records, and he does them so beautifully that why would you not be convinced? But he's using Debussy and Rameau, <laughs> two of the greatest French composers of all time. Mm. And then he did another one, but with Philip Glass. And it was not a lot of Philip Glass, but it was Philip Glass that is kind of most hypnotic, harmonically challenging and enjoyable. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times, Ray, I find, I use the word a lot, soporific it's kind of like it's really diluted and there's we've got the richter guy on on deutsche grand Forum. we've got the balmaria band on deutsche grand Forum. they're all it's good if you like that stuff it's fine but for me it's there's just so much music to listen to and time's ticking away i don't have enough time so i'm glad i'm glad you you um you uh you, you mentioned to for me to read to listen to it since it really does divide people um can you maybe write, just jot down, Ray, or even better come up and tell us why you like it so much? I mean, I, th the reason I don't like it maybe is is I like it a little bit more pure Chopin. I, I'm not sure. I only listened to it for about half an hour, so to be honest with you, I didn't listen to um, to a lot. Uh, but I'd love to either write down or what you, why you like it so much. Um, and Auntie Barb. Auntie Barb, I think you're new here. Uh, it's very welcome to you. Uh, Hey guys, say hi to Auntie Bob. Hey, hi. Oh, it's Jim. We call him Auntie Bob. Auntie Bob. How are you, Auntie Bob? Um, and I assume she she has a um, comment. Eloquence Decker, which is brewed for Dance Macabre. Awesome Sonics. Um, Auntie Bob, who's the rec who's that recording with on the Eloquence Decker? Do you know Scott? That's the RCA. That's the RCA by. Um... Gibson, right? Yeah, I, I think it must be. The, yeah, must be. I think I so. Know. I know it's a, it's a fun piece though. It's fun <clears> to play. <throat> that lovely flute part in it. I, I, Jim, you must have played Dance Macabre a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember last time. A long time ago, though. I mean, the yeah. interesting thing is those sort of orchestral lollipop things. They don't come up very often these days. They're not really popular, are they? I mean, apart from nights on a Burr Mountain or um you know stuff like that and e even then uh, you know they don't sort of find their way into concert programs i mean i remember playing orchestras when you would do a, a, a concert of that sort of stuff wouldn't you mm. you do lo lollipops and you know you'd have somebody do the the mendelssohn violin concerto as a sort of concerto and, and then the rest of it would all be some song carnival the animals and, and capriccio italian and whatever um, but um, it, they're, they're sort of. I, I think it's because orchestras are, are 
very much trying to find their identity these days. And they seem to sell Marla symphonies and things much more easily than they do, you know, lollipop concerts and things. So I, I don't know what other people think. Maybe some, some people out there may have other ideas about it. Yeah, Ray, Ray said about um, the Chopin project, we call it lo-fi. <laughs> so the opposite of audio file. It's just great, relaxing, listening, and yes, self-perfect. Well, Ray, you know, like I said, if people enjoy it, that's great. Uh, like I said, the the uh, Viking Kurt Olufsen, there's so many great pianists around that have done the Beethoven and the Brahms. Let's let's do something different, and that's and fine. But there has to be some kind of musical, for me, weight behind it. And sometimes uh, these, uh, you know, the Richter guy reimagining the Four Seasons, I mean, you know. If it sells records, say hey, who the hell, you know, why not? Um, and hey, Scott, how are you? Uh, Scott says he has Dance Macabre with Toscanini and the NBC Symphony from 52. Mm. It's a terrific performance. I bet it is. <laughs> I bet it is. Um, and yeah, Andy Barb is also from New Zealand. What part of New Zealand? Do you know Ray? <laughs> it's like if you, you go to the States, you're from Canada. Where are you from? I'm from Montreal. Do you know my aunt B? She lives in Vancouver, <laughs> 4,000 miles away. <laughs> yeah, I used to find that in America as well. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and uh, you Americans, uh, Jose, uh, Jose said, I have one by Sikowski in the Philadelphia from the 20s. I love that. You're getting very English, Jose. The sound is a bit dodgy. <laughs> I love that word. But the, uh, <laughs> but the forms, <laughs> wow. Now, um, Armin just came on. He's popped off again. Armin, um, uh, handsome uh, L.A. Uh, record collector, um, has a little presentation tonight. And unfortunately, Angie from Oz. So she's my aunt. Okay, Ray. Nice one. That's the, the New Zealand. The New Zealand is the <laughs> um, so. Uh, Ray, who uh, usually does the, was going to do the EMI presentation, right? The third in the series. Uh, he did Columbia, then he's H, uh, H, H, HMV, yeah. And now, um, and now EMI. But he's been sick this week. So first of all, get ready, uh, get uh, well, Andrew, and we'll see you next week. Now next week we have that presentation. We have James Edwin Stanley Norris. Doing a presentation about Andre Cloyton, the conductor. Was he Belgian okay. or French? He was Belgian. Belgian. And uh, and he's going to show some records and stuff and talk about his, his, his discography. That'll be wonderful. And we also have a guest, uh, a pianist named Beth Levin. Now, if you want to have some fun this week, go on Instagram or go on Facebook or go on uh, Twitter or even at Threads, I think. And, and, and Beth. L-E-V-I-N, Beth Levin. She's a Brooklyn-based concert pianist. She's a Curtis student, and she studied with uh, Sirkin. So I'll have some questions for her. She's got some new CDs out. So Beth's going to pop by next week. Oh, good, uh, good. So that'll be fun. Yeah. I'm not sure if she has I any think... more, but she has some CDs. And she's a, But she does a lot of stuff on social media, and she's, she's a lot of fun. So that'll be great. So um, this is from... James. Hey, James, how are you? That's the reason to have the recordings. Not have not played live compositions, so you can enjoy these at your leisure. Yes. yes. And um, Auntie Barb is from Auckland, and we know uh, Ray is from Christchurch because we've talked about that. And um, Jack is in the Smoky Mountain teaching photography next week. Rather, you, Jack, are you leaving again? Jack, that's not right. <laughs> so come on up this week, Jack. Okay, so here's our friend Armin. Hello, Hello. everyone. Hey, Hi. Armin. Hi. Hi. So I'm going to use uh, Andrew's style of presentation here to talk to you guys about uh, about a composer. Um, so his name was Gomitas. And uh, I have a feeling like no one's happy have uh, heard of him and a couple of reasons why i wanted to talk about him is uh, uh first of all he was entered into unesco's memory of the world uh, a couple months ago 
Oh, wow. Uh, this month is April 24th, which, uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, in a few weeks, um, which is the Remembrance Day for the Armenian Genocide. And uh, it's been said that he did for Armenia what Bartok did for Hungary. And by that, uh, what we mean is that he collected um, <clears throat> folk music um, where not only did he collect it, but he kind of um, showed the world that, you know, Armenia does have their own music because, uh, you know, throughout the centuries, different uh, empires would take over. And, you know, at the time where, when Komitas was born, if you spoke Armenian in the Ottoman Empire, you could have your tongue cut out, you know, on the street. So that's kind of the situation he was born under. He was orphaned as a young child, and he was discovered by an Armenian bishop um, just singing in the street. He was taken to Echmazin Cathedral, which was built in uh, 301 AD. And um, he eventually started studying at the Gevorkian uh, Seminary. And then he was sent to uh, Frederick William University in Berlin. I guess it's called the Humboldt University now. Oh, yeah. And uh, he gave regular lectures on Armenian folk music and demonstrated that it went back to, you know, pre-Christian pagan times. And then a um, uh, fun fact about me, I was actually born in uh, Echmazin and I was baptized in this uh, cathedral here where oh. Gomita spent a large yeah. part of his life. Um, and he basically, uh, <coughs> he basically, um, you know, went around from village to village and he would ask people to sing their folk songs and he would transcribe them. Um, there's a story where he went to uh, a village and said, you know, I've heard you guys have great songs, you know, can you sing them for me? And I, I'd like to transcribe them. And they said, we don't, we don't just sit around in the house singing. You know, there has to be, we have to be plowing the field or we have to be, it has to be a wedding or, you know, it has to be a funeral. You can't ask a, a girl to sing the bride's lament, you know, just sitting around at home. So it was like very... Um, you know, their day to day lives, they would sing, sing these songs and none of them had uh, really been uh, transcribed and available anywhere. So he pretty much just uh, preserved all these uh, songs and um, he collected over 3000 folk songs. He also uh, deciphered an ancient Armenian musical notation called Khaz, which was used by um, the spiritual, you know, for hymns and things like that. Um, and it was kind of like a lost uh, notation. And he went through like hundreds of uh, uh, books and um, things like that, ancient books. And he, you know, um, he saved, you know, saved that, you know. And uh, sorry, I'm trying to figure out where I am. Uh, yeah, he formed a choir. And he presented all, um, you know, Armenian folk music uh, in Berlin, in Turkey, in Tbilis, in Baku, and in Paris, where he befriended Claude Debussy. And after a uh, uh, Gomitas concert, Debussy declared that on the basis of a single song, he should be deserved to be recognized as a great composer. This is the ancient Armenian musical notations that he deciphered. So he would kind of compare them to, you know, the European um, notation and he figured out what, what meant what, you know, for hundred, hundreds of years it was lost and no one could figure it out. So he really was a musical genius in, in a lot of ways. Um, this is his choir in Turkey, uh, I believe around 1913 or 14. And uh, on April 24th, he was arrested and exiled um, you know, as as were hundreds of other Armenian intellectuals, which uh, was the beginning of the genocide. And, uh, you know, he <clears throat> he was a big uh, he was a big uh, uplifting person within that group while they were exiled. But uh, as soon as he started to see what was going on, he pretty much just, uh, uh, you know, had a mental breakdown. And he was sent to Paris, where he spent uh, about the last 20 years of his life just not composing anything else. 
And then uh, that this is a monument of him in Paris. And then I just wanted to talk about some releases because after all, this is, uh, you know, about us hearing the music. And unfortunately, we can't play it on here. But this was uh, released, I want to say, a couple of days ago on CD. It's called Music in the Time of War. And it's uh, Kirill Gernstein playing uh, WC and Komitas. Fantastic pianist. Again. Yeah, I highly recommend this. I streamed it. I haven't bought it yet, but um, there is, uh, I think it's like four discs or something like that. And uh, there's one disc of Gomitas's piano music and then another one of his folk songs with an uh, amazing singer, uh, Ruzan Montashian. Uh, this is another one on ECM, uh, Gomitas's, uh piano songs, seven songs on piano. Uh, this is another one. It's a quartet. Uh, I, I can't pronounce this pianist's name, Kiko Sijiko. Six dances on piano. And this is a divine liturgy of um, that Batarak music that I mentioned. This is the Latvian radio choir. Um, I highly recommend it. And this is uh, Tigran Mansurian and Kim Kashkashian, uh, also on ECM, I believe. She's a great violinist, I think, isn't she, Kim Kashkashian? Yes, yes. Uh, but yeah, that's all. Uh, I'm also going to uh, include like a, a YouTube playlist in the comments of, of some of my favorite performances because I, I really want you guys to hear, uh, hear his compositions and let me know what you think. Unbelievable. Wonderful. Thank you. I remember Thank you asked you. me a question <clears throat> about yeah. Komitas a couple of weeks ago and I'd never heard him. Uh, I will now yeah. definitely go and have a listen. I'm totally fascinated now. I'm intrigued. Uh, yeah, the uh, Armenian State String Quartet is named after him. And so is the Armenian Conservatory is named after him. So he's really considered the father of Armenian music, classical music, folk music. Yeah. It's amazing. Just when you think you've heard everything, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I figured you guys might not have heard. So, you know, it's it's something I was passionate about. I thought maybe, you know, you guys would want to listen to some new music. Absolutely. Fantastic. Armin, can anyone tell me what a super sticker is? A super sticker. A New Zealand $8.99 from Auntie Barb, which is very sweet and very good. But what does that mean? That's a donation, I think, when you're having a live stream, right? Sorry, one more time, bud? Isn't that a donation when you're having a live stream? Oh, OK. OK. I think. I'll put that to my red wine fund. No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's Armin. Armin, thank you so much. That was awesome. Yeah. I think actually Auntie Barb um, said that when Armin was talking. And she and she she hadn't even seen how good looking he is yet. He might have gone to twenty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> How's life in LA? It's good. It's good. I just rushed here from work. I was I was uh kind of being held back, but uh, I, I made it right on time. But yeah, the weather's um, amazing, so I can't complain. So good to see you. Good to see you guys. I've missed the last few streams, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm excited to you know add something to the conversation. You can Absolutely. always catch on the thing, but you you know, like I said, I'm on, on the email. You're welcome anytime. It's it's um, a race. It's a way of donating to you. That's amazing. Come on, you guys, get no, don't, don't. <laughs> great good view. Thanks, Sassy Bob. Uh, no, we're just teasing. Uh, Armin, I just got one question for you. I mean, in the seventies, I I've got some RCA. Uh, of the Armenian Philharmonic mm -hmm. with um, uh, Novorian. Czech Novorian, that's right. Yes. I, I'll, I'll, is he still going? And I, I mean, presumably, the, I mean, I know that there's been a lot of troubles around, but is the Armenian Philharmonic still going? Because we don't, we don't get recordings from them anymore. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not funded very well. And then you know, considering uh, with everything that's going on. Uh, the arts, sports just aren't funded. They're, they're, they are still recording things, but I, I can't remember the last thing that they did put out. Um, I know Tigran Mansourian is kind of uh, a well-known conductor, composer right now. But yeah, there was Shek Navorian, and then um, I forget the other guy's name, but uh, there was another one in Utah, uh, he took over, what was his name, Abernavel? Kojian. Kojian, yeah, that's right, Kojian. He did he, that, that famous uh, Utah 
I guarantee you, Scott's got it. The Koji and uh, Simply Fantastic. <laughs> Have it, Scott? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's on reference recordings. It, yeah. Is it getting ready to show? We just, ladies and gentlemen, in the viewing um, and the peanut gallery, excuse me, the Royal Circle. There it is. Look at, oh, hang on. Hang on, <laughs> hang on Scott. He's so cocky, that man. <laughs> Amazing. I love that you have them to hand. No, uh, I know, right? That was lucky. <laughs> Alan says, thanks, Armin, for a fine and informative presentation. It was wonderful. Andrew? It really was. You have some competition. <laughs> <laughs> and next week, another good-looking guy with a thick white hair. Thick Thick, lush, rampant white hair. He's going to be doing um, a presentation on Andre Clayton's. Um, so anyway, Armin, stick, stick around if you can. I don't know if you have to get going, but uh, it's lovely to see you. Um, we're going to show some records in a second. I think what we'll do is we'll start with James, and we'll see some records. Then we're going to go to Carl, and we're going to talk about digital for a little bit. And then we'll go to uh, Scott and Anthony to show some records. Um, so let's do James first. Okay. Okay, what you got, Jimbo? Right. Well, I'm going to show you, first of all, we were talking the other week about his master's voice labels. And you said you'd never seen this particular HMV label. No. And I've never seen it either. Um, this is, a, I, I found this in the shop. It's actually a Beethoven piano sonata, Stephen Bishop Kovacevic. But it's, I've never seen this actual hmv label before so it's also a lovely recording it's a good good quality lp as well but um so they obviously are around i can't remember when they uh this one said jim jack i've added you to the stage but you you seem to be you've gone bright red are you embarrassed oh it's a chair sorry okay well, well it's the, master, the mastermind <laughs> chair isn't it yeah, yeah we'll, come, we'll, we'll come back to you we'll okay. come back to you. Hey, okay where's jim there we go hey hey buddy okay all right, this is something which I came across this week. It's Mendelssohn Italian Symphony, Schubert Three Overtures, the Japan Philharmonic Orchestra wow. with Igor Markovich. That is rare. What label is that? It is. Uh, take out, take out the center. We must see the label. Concert, concert hall. Oh yeah. Hmm. Can we see now, the label? I think it must be. You want to see the? Oh, you want no, to see the label on the record? I think it was... Um... Turn around. There we go. Oh, I... There we go. Oh, yeah. Good, look at that. Again, it's a, in very good condition. Beautiful record. I think it's around about 1970. But hmm. I've never come across the Japan Philharmonic before. I mean... I've come across the NHK Symphony and so various others, but I, I don't know. Now, th- this is this is something I think is particularly. Um, I found this. This is in mint condition. It's a double LP of the Reggie Goodall Goethe Damerung, the the ENO one with Rita Hunter, Alberto Remedios, Norman Bailey, Clifford Grant, Margaret Cherfy. It was. Um, it was recorded in um, 1972, I think. It's it's a double. It has a double CD, a, a double um, thing. But again, I don't think it's ever been played, and it has a beautiful little Wagner. Do you, now, do, you really dig, do you really dig opera in English, though, Jim? I know you sang a lot because of the. Um, you know, no, but, but but I I I. I dig this because I think this is one of the greatest achievements of English national opera and, and English opera to actually to to do the ring in English at that time I think was was a great because it introduced a lot of people to Wagner who were put off by the fact that they couldn't understand what on earth was going on. Um and here you could actually go and see it and you know, you might not hear everything, but you'd have surtitles above the the stage and everything, and I, I think it, I mean, sadly, I wasn't I was, wasn't old enough to go to the London performances, but I've got some friends who actually played in the orchestra for it, and they they just it was just a transformative experience for them. Um, I've got a few other little bits and pieces here for you. Um, this is one of those Decca Jubilees which I found. 
the Strauss Horn Concertos with Barry Tuckwell. Oh, cool. And Istvan Kertes. Um, well, that's, that's his father, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's, just, that's his father, yeah. Strauss Horn Concertos, yeah. Um, which is great. And Schoenberg, Piero Luna with uh, London Sinfonietta and David Allerton. I hate uh, that that's... piece. Not that I don't like how amazing it is, but to play that piece, it's a, can we use the word? It's a bitch to play. It's just, oh yeah. I did it, I did it, I did it after Trinity and at Trinity. And it's like, just even the opening, the flute part is like, and the piccolo part. Oh. There's the label. Again, yeah, that's, that's, that's so cool. Um. So, I mean, I think at the moment, that's probably the, the sum total of my new finds for this week. That's great. Okay, we're going to go over to crowd. Actually, I'll just go to everybody first to say hi to Jack. So, I'm in, we'll be back in a bit. Uh, we're getting a little feedback, and it only came on when Jack came on. Uh-oh. We'll try <laughs> that. How about that? Is that any better? Jen, will you come speak to your boyfriend, Jack, here and sit down? <laughs> is it the budgery girls again? <laughs> yeah, is, it, is it the birds again, Jack? <laughs> well, let me move this back. Maybe it's the speaker O's. So, Jack, where are you, where are you going next week? Well, uh, locally, um, the Smoky, Nash, uh, Smoky Mountain National Park is 10 miles away. But I have a group here, and, uh, you know, this is how we pay the bills. And Of course. It allows me to buy, Scott, you love this, allows me to buy my new... Hanna SL moving coil cartridge. Oh yeah, okay. And so that's you, why. You a review of that, Jack, when you when you got it broken in. Well, Scott nailed it. I don't know that I can say too much more. Scott went to school on that cartridge a few months ago, and <laughs> well, and part of the reason I purchased set, it. make sure it's set up precisely. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I bought, I bought it from uh, Fernando Skyfi. Oh, okay, and they do a good job setting turntables up. Yeah, yeah. That's wonderful, Jack. You're sure to. We can't wait to hear what is, what happens. Okay, up over to our friend Carl. And then <clears> Carl. <throat> so Carl, just tell us a little bit. Just you you left Yogi Carter, and you went where? I went to a uh, another location, still on the island of Java. There's a small city called Chilachap, which is about halfway to Jakarta. But it's near the ocean south of the island Java. And then there, then went about another almost hour way up away from civilization <laughs> in a very tiny, tiny village uh, where my in-laws uh, grew up and so forth and my wife. So we spent time there just with family. And uh, there was no wireless. There was I had occasionally try to get my phone to connect to something. And it was kind of a four to five days out there. Um, and that, that's that's where I was, and then we came back a couple of days ago, and uh, I'm, I'm settled back in here in Yoga Karta again. I bet when you came back, nothing changed. The news was the same. Everything was. <laughs> the same. <laughs> oh gosh, and it just seems like uh, looking at the news can be bad, a bad thing to do. Sometimes it just keeps getting crazy. Good but, enough uh, to have a wireless once in a while. Right, Even it's good enough to have. Professor yeah. at Columbia. And hearing the president of Colombia today, did you hear what she's had to say? No, but I know I, I'm expecting that she will do a good job. But that's all yeah, I she's can say. She's very competent. But it's just she's, interesting when everyone's getting questioned. Like, you will answer the questions, and you will do the, you know, <laughs> under the under the oh, lights in the, in the Congress. You mean? Yeah, yeah. she's grilled. Right. Oh well. Yeah, she's she used to run the London School of Economics. I think she's got quite a bit of. Uh, Talent and history behind her. Um, yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll see. She's, got, she, she's got chops. So what, what have you been listening to? Oh, the, yes, a bit of a background here. So I have a, a good friend and colleague, an academic colleague. He's probably just about 80 years old now. Um, I've known him for a long time. We've written research papers together in our scientific endeavors. Uh, but his wife is a, is a pianist, a classical pianist, mainly in small ensembles. Um, and I never really got to know her very well, but about, I don't know, some years ago, when her husband turned 75, he was a professor at Imperial College in London, and um, they have a, 
a Polish institute attached to Imperial College, and that's where the festivities took place after the talks and so forth. And, and um, there were some, some uh, classical music being played up on a stage, and, and it turned out that it was his wife who was performing. She's a pianist. So, and I believe she played Chopin, which would make sense because that was the Polish Academy. Anyhow, um, I, I didn't get to meet her very often, but I remember that. And then very recently, uh, they were in New York and uh, we had dinner and such, and I got to uh, know her a little better and my kids and wife and so forth. And then when they left, uh, I received two CDs in the mail. And that's what I was going to briefly tell you about because I never knew about them. But also, um, I didn't have time to listen to them. They came shortly before I was off to come here in January. But I did rip them and put them in my library and took them along. And then lo and behold, just yesterday when I was using Rune, Rune must know that we've been doing some classical things, and those two things popped up out of nowhere. And no so way. I thought, <laughs> they they were in my library, but I didn't, you know, unless I was to search and think about them, I wouldn't know they were there because I forgot I even did it. So, anyways, let me just get to it. So, you know, I have this, as you as we talked about, I, I put together my Yogyakarta classical playlist, which That's is growing. Crazy. And, um, you know, it's getting bigger and bigger. And so this is just, I'll just show you the, the, the one, the first one that I, I have. And again, I don't, I don't have the actual CD with me, so I don't have the inside insert and so on. But I do know who these people are. Um, she was part of a, this Armin trio for a while and performed at several places. It even mentions Wigmore Hall in London. So I'm hoping maybe James knows, knows her. Um, you know, her name is Denise Armand Galenbe. She's the, she's the woman sitting there. She's not holding the violin. She, it's the other guy. <laughs> she plays the piano. Um, so there's one piece. And, and in oh, this piece... She's not Canadian, is she? No, no. She's actually, she and her husband are originally Turkish. But they generally live in Paris and London and even um, Poland. Uh, they're very international. Ah. Speak so the whole language. Armand family in, in, in Toronto... Uh, famous violinist, cellist, conductors. I don't know. There maybe there is a connection that I don't know about, so it's possible. Um, so th that is that is the first one, and that contains. I can just quickly tell you what it is. There's a piano trios by uh, Shostakovich and Dvor Dvorak, two two only. Um, the first one is the piano trio number four in E minor called Dumki, and that's by Dvorak. And then the second one is um, the piano trio number two in E minor by Shostakovich. Those two what, are on that. What do you think of the sound of the performances? I was quite surprised that I, I wish I had listened to them, you know, more often. I had I never knew that. And they're probably, you know, 15, 20 years old from what I can tell. So I didn't mm -hmm. know about them. So I feel bad about that. Um, so, I mean, maybe maybe somebody knows more about it. I think, I, I think she's performed... In, in London many times because her husband was at the Imperial College and she, she originally was trained at Juilliard, but it has all sorts of, in fact, I think if I'm not mistaken, she has some kind of professorship. Uh, let me see what it is here. <clears throat> Professor of Piano and Chamber Music at Trinity Laban Conservatoire in London. Yes, that, that's where, that's where Jim, Jim and I went. Ah. Okay, so somehow she's been she's been there. So you, I mean, you guys would be more more likely to have come across her than me. Well, Trinity um, uh, Trinity uh, joined with the uh, uh, Laban Lemon Dance. So now it's the Trinity College of Music and Laban Conservatoire of Music and Dance, or something. Um, so it's it's still Trinity College of Music, but it has a dance component as well. So she teaches there. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, she'd been there. And um, so anyways, I, as I say, I wish I could tell you more. I was hoping some of you may know more than I do, but I didn't bring them with me, but I did rip them and I've been listening and I'm quite pleasantly surprised. And there's, so I'll show you the second one now. Um, there you go. Let's see if I can get it better. Yeah, there we go. Oh, wow. So it says the Haydn Quartet, but there's Denise Armand Galembe on piano. So it becomes a quintet. She joined some sort of a, it seems like a string quartet, and then played uh, uh. some pieces like that, some some uh, quintets by those two. I think I can tell you what they were. 
two two lovely re recordings, great music. Yeah, the first one was a quintet for piano and strings, uh, again by Camille Saint Sens, and then the second one is a piano quintet in A major, by Dvorak. So yeah, I've been I've been continuing to listen over the last day and a half. So. Um, I think they're worth checking out. I don't know how you can get them. You might find some of them on the internet. I looked around. Um, again, I ripped them, so I don't, I don't know where I can find them otherwise. But I, they sound quite nice, and her piano playing is lovely. I couldn't so access. I, it. I, 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 but I think they're on Apple Music. Say it again. I think they're on Apple Music. I couldn't access it from that link today. Yes, but yeah, there is on something Apple. on Apple. You are correct. Um, yes, I did find that that fact, but I didn't do anything about it yet. Right. Cool. Sure. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, um, is that Yogi Kata classical uh, uh, list available to anybody that's on Rune? I think I can make it that way. Um, sure. Probably. Once I tidy it up, <laughs> sometimes I inter sprinkle it with something we, you know, some some wild thing that's not classical. But uh, yeah, I can. I can My God, that. how dare you? <laughs> that's wonderful. <laughs> well, I'm very very no, happy. Have my kids sometimes want to hear something and then I'll go, okay, here, let's play that. And then I, I, I mistakenly save it in that, in that, you know, thing. But anyways, yeah. We're very happy to have you back. So before we get to um, Scott at the vault and my meager, my meager collection, um, Jack and Armin, do you have anything to show today? Have you, did you, have you got something? Okay. Uh, Jack, let me just put you, it's your big. <clears throat> so, I, I hate to say I bought a record for the cover, but that's <laughs> Colin Davis. Can you all see that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very young, correct? Yeah, that's a great recording. <laughs> Is it good, Jim? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, he, that was from his first phase, really, with uh, the uh, – well, he was, he was music director of the BBC Symphony, wasn't he, in the 1960s? But he made some recordings of the LSO, mm -hmm. and that was – you know, I think that's when he was in his sort of firebrand phase, wasn't he? Jack, if you go to YouTube, yeah, you'll, and you uh, type in Colin Davis or London Symphony Orchestra, the story of the orchestra, there's a black and white video of them uh, recording that recording, and you see Davis working with the orchestra, and it's basically with Stuart Nusson, who's the principal bass, very famous bass player, and how they interact, but how he works. How he works with that orchestra. It's amazing. So uh, you, guys, you, know, you guys are probably a little more. He seems like a very underrated conductor to me. I mean, we know who he is, but he doesn't seem like he's. he's I mean, he's a great conductor. I mean, he is one of the greatest English conductors. I mean, uh, you know, people, you got to remember the Bavarian Radio Symphony used him a lot. Boston used him a lot. Dresden used him a lot. He didn't, he did something with Vienna. He didn't do anything with Berlin. <laughs> But you know the LSO. So five, five of the ten greatest orchestras in the world. He was, uh, he was very active with. Mm. Hmm. And then the other record I picked up at the same time, and you know, I, it's another Phillips. And this again is kind of a question for Jim. You know, uh, I, I've heard of Raymond. Uh, is it Lepard? Is that how you? Raymond Lepard. Yeah. Um, it, he does a good job on this. It's not. I, I have a, some better versions of this, I think. But um, do you know anything about this, Jim? It's a yeah, yeah. I worked with Raymond <laughs> Leppard quite a lot in the early early eighties. We used to do the Matthew Passion oh. every every Easter and stuff. I mean, he in the seventies, sixties, and seventies, he was responsible for introducing a lot of the early Cavalli and Monteverdi operas and things. Um, and he was conducted in his chamber orchestra, I think, in the sixties. He, it's it's interesting you should say that because um, I've got something I'll, I'll show you in a minute. Um, he then went to Indianapolis, didn't he? Yeah. And he died yeah, in a big, Indianapolis. A big, right -winger, a big a big conservative <laughs> and moved to Indianapolis. <laughs> <laughs> but he turned yeah. Indianapolis into you know quite quite a good orchestra, and I think he brought them to the UK a couple of times. And uh, and also Ray Leppard conducted the BBC Northern Symphony Orchestra in the seventies for most of the seventies. I mean, I, I I always find him a really good musician. You know, a sort of nice man. You know, uh, well, if, eloquent. If you could call him Ray, you must know him okay. 
<laughs> yeah, no, well, I, well, well, we worked with him a lot because um, also worked with his chamber orchestra a lot because they were the only orchestra that was available really to tour all the time. You know, um, we did the B minor mass in Barcelona. We did concerts in Lyon. We did concerts in Paris. We did, you know, yeah. um, I think if you were a full time member of the English chamber orchestra, you were never at home really. But um, but he was he was always a very very good, very you know musician, musical guy. Everyone enjoyed working with him. There was no there was no sort of problems or anything like with some people. Well, I I have one more, and and again we get back to the term classical music. Well, this, this is classical music, is it not? <laughs> <laughs> Frank Sinatra and Duke Ellington. It's a great recording. Well, no, it's a great recording. It was done in 1967. It's a reprise of Pittman Pressing, and it sounds marvelous. And it's classical. What's it called? Francis Gate and who? Francis, Francis Albert Sinatra with Edward Kennedy Ellington. Oh, oh, oh. Wow, yeah. I've never seen never seen that record. Yeah, this is a great record. Cool, and it's it's not you know it's not it's not classical, but it's classical. Yeah, yeah. To, you to know, raise Jack, it's like um, they were asking once. They said to everyone, Carrie Ann, you know, the, the man, the maestro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You worked with all the greatest singers in the world. You must have a favorite. He says, "Well, I do." <laughs> it must be very difficult to choose. He says, "No, it's very simple." Frank Sinatra. <laughs> <laughs> Straight away. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, anyway yeah. Jack, thanks. They're amazing. Great yeah. records. Yeah. Check yeah. out the video. Uh, you'll see that recording being made. Um, yeah. Armin, get anything? Anything new? Yeah, I'll show three just like Jack. So Great. Okay. This Never is going to start. Um, One second. It's on or Orion Recordings. And oh. it's, uh, it's the Gotham Trio. Isn't that the coolest name? It, mm -hmm. Amazing. They didn't record anything else. This is the only thing that they put out. And they're playing en Enrique Granados, Martino, and a piece by Leonard Klein, who I think is the pianist on here. And the reason I bought this is because at the top, you know, the previous owner just wrote performance. And it really is an incredible record. And I try to, uh, I looked it up on eBay. I didn't see any for sale. And I looked it up on Discogs. There was one for sale, and it had never been sold otherwise. So not anymore. Not anymore, Armin. <laughs> Check yeah. it out. I think Man, it's, Discogs quick. <laughs> I think uh, it's it's available to listen to it on YouTube. So this it's it was incredible. And then I think the same guy owned this, but this is the Ariaga Quartets, and mm -hmm. at the top he wrote "Dead at 20. <laughs> so I thought that was funny. <laughs> And then again on the back, he wrote Dead at 20. What label is that? Um, this is on Music Masters. It's the Chilingarian Quartet. Yeah, they're very good. And uh, yeah, it, it it's an incredible record. And then the last one, this one I had been looking for for a while. It's on Wilson Audio File. Oh, yes. Yeah. And uh, I really love the, the Nescu uh, Sonata here. Mm. You got some, you got a great eye for records. I um, mean, fantastic. Well, where you know, I, where'd you pick those two up? What's where that? Did you, where did you pick them up? I picked up the two. Uh, this one was online. Oh, no, this one was uh, uh, at a record store called Dead Wax in California. And then these other two was from uh, Counterpoint Books and Records, which I think we've discussed here a little bit. Fabulous. We're now going to go to Scott, to the vault, his amazing vault. But I think what we'll do is we'll combine uh, three things. Uh, we'll get Scott's uh, record ch ch uh, choices first. Um, the building, the uh, first class classical library, that's either owned CD music or owned on vinyl, not, uh, not streamed. Uh, with, this week was the Brahms symphonies. And box sets are great. But if you have individuals, that's fine, too. Um, and also, it was Neville Mariner's 100th birthday yesterday, uh, if you're going to be alive. And um, I've got some Neville Mariner to show. And we could talk. Uh, I know Jim and I, I never worked with Neville Mariner. Uh, I think I worked with his son. Um, uh, Andrew, very fine clarinetist. 
Um, and uh, so we'll go to Scott first. Scott, what do you got to show us? Well, um, I have this um, Brahms symphony, symphony number four. This is magical. Bruno Walter. This is the. Um, <clears throat> uh, this was put out by Classic Records. I love that one. And uh, the other two we showed recently, when you just mentioned Brahms, I, I have this one here. Oh, the, the Kubelik. Yeah. Yeah, Kubelik. And another one, that one. <clears throat> Unfortunately, these are not in the best condition, those two Londons. So I just pulled a, an assortment of things out that are interesting. I think uh, we've been talking about EMI. So this is... Uh, Mm. This is a famous one. Very. <laughs> Very. Yeah. Harry Pearson liked that one. I remember that. That's why I bought it originally. And then the, I have this here. Oh, mm. that's, that's a great model of five. It really is. Great sound and great playing. Here's a rare uh, capital. That I found in a thrift shop. Oh, uh, uh, you showing off, Scott. <laughs> Milstein <laughs> masterpieces. Brilliant record. I mean, what I kind of shape? It's worth a few bucks. <laughs> Jim's a massive fan of Milstein, aren't you, Jim? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Great violinist. We talked about Argo a couple episodes back. I'll show a couple of Argos. Oh, yeah. Ah. George Guest. Great quadro. Uh, George Guest, right. And this is Mariner. That's good. Ah. That's a famous recording. Yeah. Good recording. Peter Warlock, the, uh, the composer. I forget his real name. He used to throw cats out of windows. He's a very odd man. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Warlock. <laughs> Musicians, crazy people. Oh, William Byrd. Oh, yes. Do you know what happened to William Byrd? He used to have a private chapel because he was Catholic. And Henry yes. VIII said, well, no, we're now Protestant. Those damn papists. So he had to have his, his mass privately in his, and so because he was a big composer for the king. Oh. <laughs> um, one more from Argo. I love this one, too. They have great covers. Yeah. Fabulous. That's These are mostly the um, the box label, not the round way. So this label. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then a um, couple of Mercuries I've never shown here before. Oh, God, that's beautiful. Oh, uh, yeah. Howard Hansen. Victor Herbert. <clears throat> this one's pretty rare, too. It's a little modern, but. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Paul Clay. Do you know the name of that? Do you know what the name of that painting is on the front? It's one of the greatest paintings by Paul Clay, the Twittering Machine. Very, <laughs> famous, very famous painting. It's a beautiful cover. I mean, it's one of those that catch your eye for sure. All of these Mercuries, when you see them, they're just so. Oh, you have that. How, how is that? How's the sound on that? That's great. It's really, really good. I mean, the materials, you know, super overgers. But I like it. I like all of these Mercuries. Oh, oh, that's, oh, oh, yeah, that's the LSO one. Yeah. Oh. Brilliant. That's a nice one, too. Color back. And then a couple of organ. <coughs> Excuse you me. Put organ. Chain, Scott, just an incredible collection. It's <laughs> I was busy in the 90s. <laughs> yeah, I was collecting anything. Um, these organ records are pretty interesting, too. That one's well known. Uh, actually, this one is, too. Three chorales. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, you have that one, too. Yeah. And then uh, these are... Uh, you won't like this one, Anthony. 
the composition or the conductor. No, yeah. I, the conductor we love. I mean, he was a Trinity man, but the Halle, yeah, I mean, he got the Halle playing really well, considering after the war, they were almost, you know. Yeah, you don't often see that one. I, I've never seen it before. That's a great record, man. Jeez. This has got a beautiful cover, too. You know, you have to love the covers that have stereo as big as the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like please, it was please, in Sir John. <laughs> Encore, please, Sir John. Well, they, they, they worked so hard on their monos, and their monos were so amazing. But so when they got to stereo, it was like, hey, you think the monos were good? Now, listen uh, to and I, I've got a John Barbaroli story if you want to hear it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, uh, you, you, may, you may have heard this one, but I think it's brilliant. In 1964, when he was recording uh, The Dream of Garantius in the Free Trade Hall with the Halley Choir and the orchestra, it... Um, it was Janet Baker as well. She sings sublimely. It, it's probably the greatest Garantius. But when they came to the uh, the devils, the you know the um, dance of the devils and things, um, Bob Rolly stopped and said, "Gentlemen, you all sound like a row of bank clerks." <laughs> and one one man put his hand up and said, "But Sir John, we are all bank clerks." <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> uh, John Bob Roy never again made any <laughs> any reference to what anyone in the choir ever did. That's a great, great story. Oh my it, God. it is great. I love that. You know, because Bob Riley had that hot nut. So, gentlemen, you sound like you bank clerks. <laughs> oh, but Sir John, we are bank clerks. <laughs> uh, anyway, can you then? Hey. Couple more. Your, your Mercury collection is stunning, my friend. It's amazing. And then a, a couple of RCAs. Uh, this is a famous one, of course. Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah. Mino Likey. The Wizard at Work. There used to be a sticker on the front of those. The Wizard at Work. This one's great. Really. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, this is the Strauss waltzes with Reiner. That's the, that's the original. Yes, that's the, it's very interesting, Scott. That's the only original I think kills the analog productions. Oh yeah, it really does. It's, the analog productions is overblown. That is so wonderful. Yeah. Is that an early pressing. Yeah. Oh yeah, Indianapolis. Uh, it's a Indianapolis. Sorry, I'm in the dark here. <laughs> 15S, 11S. I have a 1S, 1S too. Um, and the classic. The classic's not that good though. This is um, this is a nice record too. Leontine Price recital. Beautiful map cover. Wonderful spot. Yeah. Oh, that's a great one. Yeah. And then one more, or two more. This is an actual, actually a Soria um, oh, look case type. Funeral, Funeral March and Sonata in B flat. Rubenstein. And then the second, Munch Daphnis. You know, oh, yes. The first one's the, the more notable, I guess, but I like this one too. Some of these remakes they did are just as good, really, I think. Just they don't have the early stereo, simple stereo, you know. Scott, while you're there, while there was that new little streamer that you got to review, they sent you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I contact this company um, because my little, my, little, my little Bluetooth streamer died, and it's the only digital playback I have. So I contacted this company called Oris. Uh, they're... Their ad kept popping up in my feed. It's called the Blue ME Pro, and it's a great it's a great little device um, with a screen, nice case, very very solid. And uh, I've only had it for a few hours, but I hooked it up immediately, and it has like an audio file grade DAC in it. I'm going to review it on the channel, so you'll you get to see a little bit more about it. But I'm very very pleased <laughs> to have streaming back in my system. 
Um, so God, who do you use as a streaming provider? Um, I have. I have Spotify, Amazon HD, and Tidal. I just joined to test this. So it streams um, from Apple devices in AAC. So that's their codec only. So it's, it's like CD quality. If you use Samsung devices, they have uh, a different codec that is actually high resolution over Bluetooth. So it's pretty impressive. Cool. Yeah, I'm happy about that. Okay, I'm going to show a few records in okay. my music collection. After I'm going up after Scott, which is a big mistake, but I'll do my best. Um, <laughs> this is the uh, we're, we're kind of being Brahms centric tonight, and we'll get there eventually. But uh, this is um, my favorite Brahms four. Uh, it was also Reiner's favorite record that he ever made uh, in, in Kingsway with I think it's Kingsway with um, Wilkinson. And uh, it's just a magnificent record. And the, the Royal Philharmonic play out of the skins. It's a wonderful Brahms horn. I mean, he's such a great conductor. It everything, really is a great, a great. Everything record. he did turned to gold, that man. And then, of course, he was he did this. If you're going to have a Brahms concerto. Uh, the, um, the, um, who's the Russian guy, uh, Jim, who's, who did it on Testament? Kogan. Kogan. Kogan's is wonderful. Mm -hmm. wonderful. If you have that, you're fine. But... Reiner, uh, sorry, Heifetz really did kind of ruin it for everybody. There's a passage at the end of the slow, at the end of the first movement, where he takes the melody and he goes up, Brahms is just a genius, and takes it up a tone, a tone, and it like goes up to heaven, and, and then it ends on a high note. And it's so beautiful. It's like, it's just it's choking me up now just thinking about it. So if, think, if you're going to get Brahms, that, and this is the analog production version and it's magnificent it really is the chicago symphony the opening is beautiful the solos the oboe solo is great uh, i forget the gentleman's name uh ray still beautiful highly recommended and <clears throat> i've got some argos this is a, a circular argo this is an absolutely magnificent record my wife hates it this is sir michael tippett uh doing his second symphony which is an amazing symphony and if you like uh, tuneful modern music, uh, it's for you. Um, uh, it also has the uh, Sonata for Four Horns by Tippett with the John, uh, Barry Tuckwell Horn Quartet, basically the LSO horn section. It's, you can't believe the playing on it. It's, it's incredible. Um, and this is a famous uh, symphony to start at the beginning. It starts off, it's kind of dedicated to Sibelius as it's chugging on, 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 on bass and then Horns come in and then violins come in on a very, very, very difficult pattern. And at the, at the uh, premiere at the proms, um, uh, Adrian Bolt was conducting. It's got to go, to -da 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 -da, and it's like that, very crisp. The concert master at the BBC Symphony bought them in a bar early. Well, let me tell you something, you saw that score, you know it's going to be a disaster. So what did he do? Uh, it wasn't his fault. Bolt goes, he stopped the orchestra. He turned around to the audience and said, ladies and gentlemen, completely my fault. We'll begin again. That's class. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the uh, Saturday Night Live when um, that girl, I forget her name, she has a sister too, is a singer, that she blamed the band? Never blame the band. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, okay, so back to Argo. These are the Swift. Who would you? <clears throat> Ashley Simpson. <laughs> oh, okay, Argo. This is uh, uh, Neville Mariner. Uh, at his very best. Notice what he's, they say there? Director. These are the early ones. This is a brilliant Pulcinella. Second only to the LSO with Abada, which is on digital, but it's incredible. But this is very, very good. And Mariner was more, he was the principal second violin in the LSO. And then, um, but what Neville Mariner was more than a fine violinist and far more than a conductor, was he was a good leader from the second violins or the principal violins. But he was an incredible businessman. And he decided to get the best players in London. In fact, one of Jim's friends, Keith Pascoe, wasn't Keith the leader of this at mm. some time? Yeah, and also another friend of Jim's and mine, Tom, Tom Bowes, played as principal second. I've got a story about Neville as well. I can tell you in a bit. Uh, but, uh, you know, just what smart people do, they get the very, very best players around them. And mm -hmm. they never had a bad, they never made a bad record. The ones that, that Scott played, 
showed, the ones that Andrew showed, the ones that I'm going to show, they're amazing. They got great reviews. Even the, even the Berlin Phil got bad notices sometimes. These guys never. Yeah. This mm. one I've done it before. Uh, I think it's a little more expensive now, but I got it for like five bucks. This is Rossini. <laughs> Rossini wrote them when he was like 10 years old. They're incredible. And this is a very beautiful recording. And this, I think this, that's, that's a very expensive record now. Yeah, when I got it, it wasn't. I know a couple of guys uh, bought it on my recommendation. They got on Discord. It wasn't too much, but like I think their reputation, you know, get. Um, this is, you know, Anna Klein Life Music. You got to have one of those, and why not have the Academy? Right. Notice they're all early, directed by Neville Mariner. Mm -hmm. This is the record you need for a bass response. Forget, um, forget uh, yeah, Kingsway, the Rumble. The rumble on this, I've told you the story, I won't go into it again, but this has such a low bass rumble from uh, heavy goods vans outside the, the hall. I can't <laughs> how low it is. They would never have heard it. I noticed it's not directed anymore. It's just Neville Mariner. So he's now into get, becoming a conductor. And then he got uh, the, uh, what was it? The orchestra became much bigger. And the, the playing was always wonderful, always great players. And then he got... Um, the Minnesota Orchestra, I had him do Rachmaninoff second in Toronto with them. It was okay. He was, a, you know, the guys in the orchestra, he was a good conductor. But his forte was leading small groups. Um, he got the name, the 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 vibe, the whole deal, uh, the record deal, the recordings by Argo, the Decca recordings, just incredible. And those early ones, I cannot recommend them highly enough. Excellent. Now, just briefly to Brahms. Uh, Brahms symphonies. The the records I have. This is an Emil Berliner remaster, not part of the uh, DG original source series. This is uh, done by um, Emil Berliner, and it's all analog. And it's the uh, the later version of the Carian symphonies. They're, I just think they're just magnificently played, and he really cleans up the recording. Like a lot of you know, somebody said on one of the comments today on my Deutsche Grammophon review, uh, Deutsche Grammophon video. You can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. Well, uh, he, Emil Berliner does a good job. I guess Sidney Meyer got these as well. So that's wonderful. Used to be about 100 bucks. I think probably even a little bit more now. And <clears throat> one more record just to show. This is a box. I needed my chain of music was pretty low. So I got this box of um, Brahms Stretch Ground Fund with all the great recordings on it, the great, great groups. Um, and it's, it's wonderful. It's about 20 records. It's got everything, uh, and it cost me like 50 bucks on Discogs, but it's it's very, very good. So that's it for me. Um, I do have one thing to show, if, if you may. This is for, if you're going to get CDs, if you can get them. Uh, boy, these are amazing. Let's see if I can find them here. Yeah. Those Brahms symphonies on Esoteric. If Angie was here, she would recommend those. They're SACDs. SACDs, they're absolutely amazing. Just wonderful. And that's it for me. So um, uh, I think, oh, one other question I wanted to get to. Maybe you guys will know a little bit more about it. Um, Superfon, the Czech company, and Turnabout. I think Turnabout is an American company. What do you know about it, guys? I don't know. Great turnabout. I want to say there's a there's a Copeland recording. Right. There's something with the I think the Dallas Wind Symphony maybe on turnabout too. I've got it somewhere. And it's oh no, that's the Dallas. That's the famous Dallas Symphony. Um, Johannes uh, Symphonic Dances. Um, there you go. There that's, you go. That's yeah. amazing. The original is good, and I think that Kevin Gray did a remaster for turnabout. But I had the I had the Athena, Doug. It, that's great. Oh. Just oh. audio. Oh. I love that recording. But yeah, Turnabout was an American company, I think. Yeah. Do, you, do you, anybody else have any Turnabout? Yeah. Um, Turnabout were, I think, mainly an English label. In the 70s, I collected a lot of them. They were Vox. Yes. Yeah. And Vox, were... I mean, amongst the, the, the things that Vox did was they went to Vienna in the early 50s and signed up lots of you know, itinerant German musicians who were trying to get a record contract. One of them was Alfred Brendel, and they recorded That's the right. concertos with 
the most famous one of that is the Emperor Concerto, which is with the Vienna Symphony. And um, it's with our, our, our Indian friend, what's his name? Um, from Bombay. Zubin Mehta. Zubin Mehta, that's it. Um, and I had that when I was a kid. I thought it was a great performance. There's also, I mean, there were a lot of, um, I think, the Heidelberg Chamber Orchestra and places, you know, groups like that. Um, they, they were all sort of mainstream repertoire performed by little-known German, you know, orchestras, I think, mainly, because that's what Vox did. They just recorded all these little-known groups and, and made... But I think the, the recordings themselves weren't bad. They did... <laughs> they did branch out. I mean, I've also got the Otto Klemper and Mono Mr. Solemnis, which they managed to get onto one LP. I don't know how they did it. <laughs> but I think that was the last uh, last turnabout record I bought. But it was it was definitely... Um, <clears throat> and, yeah, as Jeremy says, Turnabout and Vox were related budget labels. But I think Vox actually were the powerhouse behind Turnabout. I think Turnabout was... Uh, a sort of, you know, label of convenience. But, yeah, that, that's sure. all I know about them. But they, they did have lots of... They also did things like troubadours and, and early music before early music really took on with anybody. Right. I don't know if we had Jer Jeremy before. Thank you, Jeremy. And if if you're new tonight, welcome. Um, here's a question for us, guys, just before we pack up. Tech writer, um, Slavonic dances. Let's go around the table. That's what are you what are your preferred Slavonic dances? Just don't get the uh, don't get the analog productions LSO one with the uh, <laughs> it's so it's brilliantly played, but it's so bright, it's ridiculous. Um uh, go ahead, Scott. What's your favorite one? I don't have an answer for that. That I think the <laughs> the classic of that performance is the only one that I'm aware that I have. Yeah, and it's, it's a pretty, little bright, yeah. It's pretty bright. Well played. Jim, yeah. do you have a Slavonic dance that you'd like? Yeah, Durati's RPO one that he recorded. Uh, it's one of the last recordings I think he did, but I, I think it? they're lovely. Were you on it? No, 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 no. No, but um, uh, I bought it in Canada with you. What, when you were directing in Canada? Yeah. <laughs> well, when I used to go home with a with a rucksack full of CDs because they're like a dollar a piece, you know, in comparison to what we were paying in London, which is like sixteen dollars a CD, you know, and you were you were getting it for like two dollars a pop, you know, in <laughs> Sam the Record Man in Toronto or something. If you want to treat yourself, uh, stream or buy the CD. It's not on LP. Well, I guess originally is the Cell Cleveland. It's absolutely miraculous. When you hear them play, the precision and the sound, it's, it's amazing. So a tech writer, I would definitely, definitely go for the, um, uh, definitely go for the, the cell. Um, Scott says, Ray Still, Principal Oboe and Donald Peck didn't speak to each other after Still was fired by Martin and reinstated by the Musicians Union. Did not know that inside information, Scott. I do know that um, Schulte, they didn't speak for 30 years, Schulte got the orchestra and there was a big bust up again between Still and they weren't talking. And Schulte brought them into the ante room and said, you start talking to each other and be nice. Otherwise, I'm not accepting this orchestra. I'm not taking it. Do you understand me? Don't test me on this. And they and they started to be friends after that. <laughs> but it's just, it's like when Jimmy Galway went to the Berlin Phil. <laughs> Jimmy Galway is the happy Irishman. He's sitting down. He sits down, down just next to Lothar Koch, the principal of brilliant principal of Jimmy Galway sits down. Typical Jimmy. Hey, how are you? What's going on? Lothar was... Lothar says, I don't know who you are. I don't want to know you. Don't talk to me. I want to play my music and go home. Do you understand? That's it. That's all he said to him. Like the first day Jimmy got, and Jimmy got is so, like if you ever met him, he's like the most gregarious, lovely man. Anyway, <laughs> a, and um, James says, Kubel excelled Doc Nani. Yeah, Doc Nani. Mm. And this Dr. Today's 93. He's he was had some bad health, but he's coming back. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, we're at one at one hour thirty. I thought we were going to be a little short tonight. Didn't get to the CDs or some other things, but that's okay. Jack, we will miss you next week. But thank you so much for coming on. It's my pleasure. You guys are great, Scott. I'll let you know about the cartridge. All right. Yeah, definitely. We all want to know about the cartridge. Yeah, Hannah, the. 
the, the, the internet is in love with Hannah. <laughs> I, I think I told you that uh, Jesus, we'll get him on here one day. We just love him, one of our writers. Um, he actually had a $3,000 face mission to use for nothing. And he sent that back to me because he actually purchased his re review unit of the Am Amami Blue. That's how good the Ham Hannah Amami Blue was. Um, Armand, thank you so much for the presentation tonight. You substituted for Scott brilliantly, and it was a wonderful. I'm going to be listening to those and searching, the, especially the Carol Gerstein tomorrow uh, morning. I'll post the link <clears throat> of some of uh, you know my favorite performances so far. Hopefully it works. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks for letting me do that. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. Uh, if, if Scott, Jim, and uh, Carl just hang out just for a second while I hang up. Uh, so thank you to everybody, and thank you to the, the, the peanut gallery, or as Ray likes to call them, the Royal Circle. He's, New, he's in New Zealand. Is there anything royal there? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyway, guys, thank you so much, and um, definitely, 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 uh, we'll see you next week. I can't wait already. Joey, of course, always so nice. Great show. Thank you so much. Can't wait until next week. Neither can we. Thank you so much, guys. Have Good a night. great day. All Bye. the best. Bye-bye.